And this is actually so crazy, there's no point for me to try to explain it. You have to see it with your own eyes. A Notion, add a simple CRM database to this page to track the company name, URL and type. Let's see what happens. And uh, there we have it. A CRM database with the company name, the website and the type. But that's not everything. I have now some data that I would like to fill in. So please Notion, uh, add those records to the database. And again, let's see what it does. And we see it fill out that database in front of our eyes with all the data from there. Absolutely insane. Now let's take it one step further. Please Notion, uh, visit the website of each company listed uh, in the CRM database you just created and analyze the landing page at the high level structure overview as a text property to this database. All right, good start. We have now a property for the landing structure and we're getting some landing page structures. Let's actually, while this works, you know, oops, let's make sure we uh, set up here that we wrap this and we can actually see everything. So yeah, they actually did it. They turned Notion AI from this little useful Q&A bot, you know, that could answer your questions into something that can actually control your workspace and take pretty much any action for you. But just how good is it? What are the things that you should start using it for? And is it secure? All of this and everything else that you'll need to know, well, we'll cover that in the next few minutes. First up, where can you find it? Currently, only in the bottom right corner. Even though Notion has a bunch of ways, right, for you to access Notion AI in general, starting from the space command anywhere to pressing command P, right, and then asking a question or to your homepage. All of these have Notion AI, but none of them have the updated agent version yet. That one you can really only access through the bottom right, right, or by pressing Command J. And then it pops out this little and reworked sidebar. And it finally can do the one thing I was asking for from the beginning. It can read databases. So here I have a task database, right, with a nice new conditional formatting from Notion. I can not just ask it how many open tasks do I have. And it understands that that means it should look at this database. It should figure out, well, which property determines who it is assigned to and which property determines the status. And then it will figure out, well, these many tasks are assigned to you. It's still a little bit slow, as you can see on the side, right? It takes a moment for it to answer those questions, but it will get there, I promise. Okay, it has come up that I have 10 open tasks where I counted tasks assigned to me where the set is not complete. That's pretty good, but is it correct? Well, let's check the chart and we can see, yes, 10 of these tasks were in fact assigned to me. Now we see that some of them have overdue dates, right? Uh, all the ones that are highlighted in red here. So uh, please, uh, can you push the due dates for overdue tasks assigned to me to tomorrow? Let's actually make sure that one of these right, is assigned to Jill so it doesn't uh, reassign uh, all of them. And then we'll ask you to do that and hopefully update everything so that yeah, <laughs> we have a fresh to-do list again. Okay, figure them out. And now let's see whether we, we get some of them assigned and uh, reassigned. Da -da -da -da. Which ones are actually, I think the highlight is currently on the priority, not on the overdue, but never mind. Uh, we, we can still see, right? So like July, right? That's in the past. Okay, that one is just updated to August 7. Amazing. That sounds good. August 7, there again, right? So yeah, it goes in and makes these changes based on what we request. And that's not it. As you already saw in the intro, Notion AI can now create databases for you. It can fill them with data. It can take the data that you upload, right? Through a screenshot, through a PDF, and actually turn it into structured data. One of the, the biggest issues often, right? Initially, when you get data from all these different sources and need to make sure it looks nice and neat in Notion database. And then it can work with these databases and give you all the information that you need. Add on top the fact that it can now browse the internet and for the most part access pretty much any publicly accessible website with the exception of, for example, LinkedIn. So it can't scrape profiles, but except for that, right? It's really, really good at now getting you the information that you need and then just doing the job for you. Let's do another one. This time we're going to ask it to research the best locations in Europe for a city trip and then create a database with its findings. So it will probably take a while to do this on the side, but we can also watch it work. So you can see 
Well, while it's thinking right so similar to, for example, agent mode in ChatGPT, can kind of follow it along as it tries to explain to itself what it's supposed to do. It might then decide that it should browse around right on the internet to look up certain things, uh, depending on what that agent decides, and then later uh, start adding the pages here. But while this works on the site, let's quickly talk about sort of the things that don't work so well yet, and then most importantly, the risks. First, as you can see, it is a bit slow, right? In most of the cases, when it comes to the data entry, you'd probably be faster just creating this database from scratch, right? If you're particular used to using Notion. Or alternatively, right, if you need to create databases, typing slash database and then using the uh, build with AI feature is probably faster as well. Uh, in particular, because that one is now much better. It really sticks to your instructions, right? When it comes to telling it to please, uh, you know, keep a certain format or keep certain properties in there. So that's one thing. It's a bit slow, but still really cool that it can do that. The second thing to keep in mind is that it often is a bit overconfident, right? So it doesn't quite know its own limits. Again, similar to ChatGPT or Claude, it has a system prompt that will always instruct it to be helpful at the end, right? And make suggestions as to what else it should do. For example, previously, when it did the CRM in the beginning of the video, right, it asked me whether I should take screenshots of these pages and add it to it. And that, of course, would be absolutely amazing. But if you then ask it to take screenshots, you will soon realize that it gets an existential crisis when it realizes that it actually can't do that. Along the same lines, Notion AI is currently limited to what the API can do. And that means it can do a lot of things like querying databases, creating databases, right, adding properties to them, or writing whole Notion pages. But what it can't do is probably the most important piece of a system architect. And that is making sure that the databases that it creates have also linked view elsewhere, right? It can create views on existing databases, but it cannot, for example, then create a linked instance on your dashboard. And again, it doesn't always know that it can't do that. Earlier today, when I was sort of testing it for this video, I asked it to figure out all my tasks on my to-do list in my main database. And it found a bunch of them. And then, very helpful, it asked me whether it should create a new view for me that shows my upcoming seven tasks, right? Uh, sorry, the upcoming tasks for the next seven days. Great idea. It's a view that we build very often for our client implementations. So I asked it to, yes, please go ahead and add it to the project management dashboard that, by the way, it also found on its own. And then it was running for, I think, like five minutes <laughs> before it got stuck in this infinite loop of trying to figure out why it can't add that link view. So it's currently limited to the things that you can do with the API, which includes a lot of things, but doesn't include yet creating a fully responsive Notion database setup. In other words, Notion AI has now actually gotten the capabilities that the MCP for Notion already had. In case you wonder, MCP is basically a handbook that companies can write for their tools and then hand it to another AI tool like Claude or ChatGPT. It's basically how those connectors work. You might have noticed right, that ChatGPT or Claude can now by default connect to your Notion workspace and retrieve information. And they will do that through much the same way that Notion AI does it here in the sidebar. Right? It will write API calls to get that information so they all have sort of the same feature set, although the Notion AI one, right, since it has, of course, a lot more context of your knowledge and has this really good retrieval, will be a bit superior there. It brings us also, though, to the risks. Just as with MCPs, the problem of letting Notion AI, you know, run your thing and doing these things for you is that, just as with AI in general, it can easily misunderstand you. So I would be very, very careful with playing around with this. It's absolutely amazing. But if I ask it to set all the tasks in this workspace to complete, it will do that, right? And it will probably do that across the whole workspace, across every team member. And then we have like a lot of data updated that, of course, I could have also done this mistake myself, but still with AI, it's a little bit faster to do that. So that's very important to keep in mind. So yeah, super promising, but with this asterisk, right? That uh, before you ask it to make any changes to your databases, make sure that you want these changes to happen. Also, a quick side note that if something goes wrong, right, and you make the wrong changes, you can always have uh, roll back your Notion workspace to a previous version, right? If it just uh, collapses a little bit, go to the side here, we see for this page, for example, we have our version history. And with that, we can go back in snapshots to a point in time right before the Notion update, uh, sorry, the Notion uh, AI changes. Of course, nothing right, that you want to rely on. So ideally, be sure that when you use Notion AI, you ask it for the right things. And at this point, right, I would mostly ask it to just 
get you information, right? Instead of making updates to the database for you, make sure to ask it to, you know, which open tasks do we have? Help me prioritize this. It's great with these tasks, but I would be a bit careful with having it make updates in particular to crucial system databases. So a really cool step in the right direction. And I can't wait for this to get more robust so I can, you know, even outsource more parts of my workflows to it. Particularly once we get the ability to create these linked views, then I think we'll see a huge, huge boost again in what we can spin up with Notion quickly. So far though, right, it's not really a replacement for expert advice. So if your team or company needs help with rolling out Notion or, you know, getting it to the next level, well, then you know where to find me and my team. We'd love to have a chat to see how we could help you build your perfect business system. And for something completely work unrelated, why not play your favorite card games in Notion? I recently took up a challenge and built Magic the Gathering in Notion. That's right, you can play your favorite trading card game right in here. Right? You have everything, the cards, the game actions, you can draw, you can shuffle, whatever you want. And I have a full video tutorial that explains how this works right over there. So click there and I will see you in a few seconds.